Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome back to Market Psychology 101, where we try to find value when there is fear and to be cautious when there's greed. If you find anything I say today to be helpful, please consider liking and subscribing. Welcome back, everybody. Um, sorry, it's been a little bit since my last videos. Obviously, holiday work stuff, uh, but we're going to be getting back into the groove here. And one place I wanted to start off was with the Crypto Fear and Greed Index. Yesterday, it finally touched into extreme greed, which is 75 and above. This has been something we've been looking at because for this year, we've been hovering right at greed, almost into extreme greed. We finally touched into it a little bit. And I do not believe we are at the current level uh, for the four-year cycle like we were here in 2020. Notice how this went up pretty fast. I believe that we are experiencing sort of the same mid-cycle high like we did in 2019. We're here. Our greed went up to about 95. Can I pinpoint that exactly? It's telling me 83, but you can see it right there between 90 and 100. I'm wondering if when we get ETF approval, that will spike up, shoot up, and then come back down, deal with all the stuff that is going to happen in 2024, possible yield curve uninversion, rate cuts. I, I know sometimes people think rate cuts are a good thing, but usually rates start to cut when there are cracks in the economy and something is broken. So that's why rate cuts tend to fall with recessions. So right here, this is just a fib from the low to the high. Something interesting that I saw is that as far as our move yesterday, and again, my fibs aren't exactly perfect, but it got to this 382 level on the fib. I am wondering, with ETF approval, if we're going to get as high as 55. I've called for possibly 60,000, and I'll show you that right now. We'll go to our indicators. I like this Pi Cycle Bitcoin high low, and when we go back to 2019, you'll notice that 2019 ran up so much, we were hitting that Pi Cycle high low line now this fib here i know i have some other lines going on but it hit the 382 and then it slowly fell off right now we are hitting our current 382 which is interesting but our pi cycle high is way up here so it's something i'm noticing right now you know it's just the timing of it if we take a look at when we bottomed or started coming out of the bottom. Look, this was early January of 2023. And this is a year from now, okay? When we were coming out of the bottom down here, we could say that was February of 19. I mean, I guess you could say April of 19. But either way, the local top was a lot earlier. Okay, even if you want to say February, you had, what, four or five months? Now it's been a whole year. And this white line, that long-term high moving average, would have been moved over here. So if we would have hit the pie cycle top back in 2019, later on, a year from February 19, where would be February 20? It would be over here. And we would have went a bit higher in price, matching the former four-year cycle highs. So that's something I see right off the bat. You know, instead of six months later, you know, let's say June of 23, that'd be like us being up here. And you know what? Look at how it would have matched the pie cycle high long-term moving average right here. And it would have been near the 382. We are at the 382. 
So that begs the question, even with ETF approval, are we going up? Or like 2019, are we going to get stuck at the 382 and go down? Maybe, and I'm just thinking out loud here for myself. This is how I assess and adjust to things that I notice. Sometimes we have to change our plans. That's okay. Or our outlooks. It's important to be open-minded because that's how we learn about the markets. We can't be stuck in our ways trying to predict, especially when things don't always go right and none of us ever get it right. But maybe the white line, maybe we shouldn't be focusing on hitting it because the timing of it is a lot later in the cycle. But just a couple things I noticed. And so it will be interesting. Should we get to the 236? The last cycle, 2019, once we hit the 236 or went from the 382 to the 236, that was it. We never went back. This orange line, that's the 382. You see it right over here. Sorry, I have some extra lines. The red line's a 236. We hit the 382, slowly went back down, came up, went back down, touched the 618, 786. Those seem to be the good two value points. Yes, we went under the 786. Briefly, didn't quite get as low, but, you know, the COVID crash, we almost did. But once we got above, that was all she wrote. So we're at an important time right now. If you want to compare this four-year cycle to the last four-year cycle, you would say that if we get above the 382 and hold it, that maybe we never come back and maybe we finish with uh, Bitcoin high into the halving. That would be a first. <laughs> and every cycle does do something different. Um, but I'm willing to be patient. As I've said before, time in the market's more important than timing the market. I'm willing to be patient because I took time to buy over here and over here and in here. I'm hoping for it to come back, but I'm not gonna chase these pumps. I'm not gonna chase extreme greed. That's one of the easiest ways to get wrecked. And yes, it's possible you could make money, but it's pretty much gambling. I've told you all that I like this channel to be for the new or long-term minded investors, people looking to tackle things like stock and crypto with a careful calculated approach. A lot of channels are all about trading and I think it encourages gambling and bad habits in a way. You know, so always consult with a financial advisor first and foremost. These videos are for entertainment purposes, in my opinion, not financial advice. But if you are doing some stock, crypto trading or uh, investing, dabbling on your own, these are some things to look at. Right now, the RSI is still above 50, relative strength index. Our yearly price is still at a yearly high. Look here, we bounced off the 50 in the RSI. That's interesting. And so even though we've gone up to a higher price and we see this coming down, I have to wonder, this trend, if it keeps going down, maybe when it gets under 50, it starts to correct. Or, <laughs> you know, here we're starting another local uptrend. Are we going to become overbought in the RSI one more time with an ETF approval, hit the 236, like I talked about that 55,000 level, and then come down. I don't know. But that's just what I'm looking at, how I am assessing the markets. I have adjusted my buy zone and mega buy zone. And yes, I'm going a little bit off of what happened in 2019. Now, the reason I put my buy zone and mega buy zone a little bit above the 786 and 618 is because sometimes we might spike and then come down. That can happen. And so if that does happen, you don't want to miss an opportunity to buy or sell. And so let's say we did come down in the 786 and immediately bounced off. Well, if it was anywhere around here, this 27,000 level, I would be very excited myself about buying. If it was anywhere below 
in the 618, the 35,000 level. I'd be very excited about buying. I might even consider buying even if it got close to it. Under 0.5, sure, maybe, but you know, depends on where the RSI is and what some other indicators say as well. So what is interesting, and I'll go into stocks here a little bit soon. Total market cap, we have this little trend line just going across. It is interesting as we were crawling up, we are starting to come back to this. As you notice where we are currently, look back here, you know, there's some points of what was formerly support and then has then become resistance and is support again. Is it going to break under this point? And will the overall total three, that's total crypto market cap without Bitcoin and Ethereum, is it going to go down here? Now, this matches Ethereum quite well, typically, you know, so it's about doing the same thing. There's some fibs there. We've been riding this line. You know, guys, in these lines, I just draw these if I start noticing, you know, some patterns. So, you know, let me get rid of this. It's looking a little too confusing. So this blue line that I drew way back here is just hitting that point quite a bit. And we're coming up here as well. You know, so we are wedging up a little bit. And maybe as we get closer to the end of that wedge, that's June Maybe around that time, the price does something big. Bitcoin dominance. You guys remember when this thing broke under. And I know there's been some people talking about how dominance has to get to this level. It doesn't have to get to any of these. But this trend line that I've drawn, something of note. Let's zoom way out here. Uh, let's go to all so we can see it better. Just start from up here. And when we did hit that trend line, guys, I was right near the very end of the last pumps of the last bull run. So look at this. When we touched Bitcoin dominance, <coughs> when it touched that falling trend line in January of 21, where were we? We were right here. It was at the last area of sort of accumulation before we shot up it. And then pretty much Bitcoin was done. Yeah, it came up again. But a lot of the alts had most of the run by then and were finished. And so this level right here is when Bitcoin dominance touched the top. So with that being said, if that's near the end of the bull run, I don't want Bitcoin dominance to be touched. Right back here, Right here is when there was that midway top in 2019 for Bitcoin. And look what we did here. We chopped around, we chopped around, we chopped around. There is March 2020 in here somewhere. Okay, this doesn't follow the price. Again, this is just Bitcoin dominance. But we chopped around, chopped around, and started to go up and then down. This area here, August of 2020, does it have any significance? Yeah. August of 2020, when it was at the bottom there, that was the last time before it really ran up. So maybe you look to see when Bitcoin dominance hits this line, and that might be the last opportunity to buy. When we crossed under, you know, that's from January 2020 to August. You know, so what is that, eight months? When we cross under in January, do we have eight months left? I don't know. We'll see. But it'll be interesting. You know, August, that would put us somewhere right around here. You know, that'll be interesting. Maybe we would bottom there, go up, touch it, and then finish. We'll see. Who knows? Um, as far as the stocks, I mean, guys, you know, what's been happening? Sorry. What's been happening in the last month? You know, we're Talked about how stocks were in extreme greed. We had uh, right around Christmas just selling off, selling off, selling off. And then, you know, January 5th at the end of last week. And then at the, to the start of this week, we've came up. And then, you know, maybe we're coming back down again. We'll see. 
You know, let's look at the Dow Jones. Take a look at the, this is the last month, okay. Slowly going down. So a little bit different than the S&P 500. I like the S&P 500 more, but I know the S&P, Dow, and NASDAQ all kind of show different things. The VIX, let's just fly through these quick. The VIX, you know, we talked about how this bottom here matched in 2020, January. That was three months before the COVID sell-off. So that's interesting. Now we're starting to curl back up. Yield curve on inversion. Nothing to worry about quite yet. You know, so I do wonder if crypto is going to have its four-year cycle mega pump before the true recession. The more time that goes on, the more likely that's going to happen. And then after this four-year cycle, uh, all market stocks and cryptos might go into a recession together. I'm hoping that the recession will be in line with the halving year and that maybe we can come out of it next year, 2025. Um, but you never know. You don't want to make predictions and then have them not come true. So the VIX divided by the VIX, and you can do this opposite, but either way, what it shows is every time we're hitting these lows, these peaked lows, that's usually a, a local top in the market. And then when we peak around the highs, this is if you do VIX divided by VIX. These are good times to buy right here, right here, right here. These are good times to sell or just hold and pay off your bills, which is what I'm doing. So I'm just holding, I'm holding. When we come back down here, anywhere, I'll be looking to pick up some more. Unemployment, this has us on the monthly. It's still curling up. I know the employment's been adjusted and it's still even with what the last month is. What is it, 3.7 before is it 3.8? But guys, you still see the trend. And there's a way to look at these with uh, with different lines to round them out. Well, that's worse. <laughs> I guess these are the best lines we got. Um, but, yeah, it, it's still coming up, still curling. And if you zoom out, you know, I can throw indicators on here. And they show, you know, here it says sell, here it says buy. And it's been going... Uh, and here it's a sell, and it's been going buy, sell, buy, sell. Probably another buy signal coming that, that you can buy unemployment. Um, but you are seeing a, a trend down to up. And, you know, I would guess, if you even look at the strength index, I would guess just with everything going on with the markets and with rate cuts uh, coming probably this year, that when the rates start cutting, that's when the timer starts. On average, when rates are cut, it's usually about seven to seven months, seven months until the bottom. On average, 2008, it took like two years, 2000, it took like a year and a half, so you never know. Um, but yeah, let's get back to the candles here. So yeah, anyways, I just wanted to kind of give an overview. I know it's been a while. It's so good to be back with you guys, talk stocks and stuff. Hope you enjoyed today's video. If you have any questions about anything stock, crypto related, if there are any indicators you want me to look at or anything that you do as an investor that you would like to share, I want this channel as it grows to create a community for all of us to share ideas, to be open to one another and to help each other learn and grow, you know, to be welcoming to everybody. Even if someone comes from a different perspective, you know, let's be willing to learn and be open-minded. Uh, anyways, I hope all of you are doing well, that you had a fantastic holiday. My holidays were pretty good. I'm getting into, you know, the all the January resolution stuff, you know, so walking a lot more, exercising more, dieting, not drinking, all those sorts of things. Uh, but I hope all of you are doing healthy and well, wherever you are viewing from, and that you guys are doing things to take care of yourself, your financial situation, so that you can have some extra money on the side to help yourself either make a bit more, 
with some investments or, you know, to look at becoming financially free and independent. That's my goal. That's why I'm in stocks. And that's why I use my knowledge and experience from the field of psychology to invest. And it has helped me out a lot. And I want to share that with you guys. So thank you again for joining. I'll see you all soon. Take care. Oh, and before I go, none of this financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor, blah, blah, blah. You know the spiel. Take care.